Hello and welcome. This workout is for upper body only. You will use your core muscles and your leg muscles to steady you into positions, but it is literally for upper body. So the body is designed to do two movements, push and pull. For example, pulling, pushing, but in two different directions. So you're pushing, i.e. press up, overhead press, pushing, yeah? Pulling, pulling down vertically and pulling horizontally. Yeah. So I'm going to go over these four different movements with weights. So I have got a selection of weights uh, for this upper body session. Uh, I've got a chair. Yeah. So you want a steady, nice, steady, heavy chair, um, a mat and whatever weights that you have and a band if you have or a pair of tights. So say, uh, this is a resistance type exercise workout, meaning we overload the muscles with weights. Yeah, so just whatever you have, collect them all around you. The usual, um, you want a ventilated room, so make sure the window's open or you're somewhere cool. You will need some water. Yeah, and other than that, we will get going. So I'm going to do a specific warm up for upper body. So we're going to do some shoulder rolls forwards to start with. Just getting any knots out before we begin and going back. How many times do you do these? Just follow me or I would say six to eight repetitions of each one. And then back again. Okay, we're going to do the figure of eight with the arm. You will notice I'm starting to pivot now on the feet. Just to get some movement through the waist, we're using those tummy muscles too. And then the other side. And then we'll put them both together. It's a little bit of a kayaking kind of looking move now. To get the upper body, the shoulders nicely loosened off. Up and down. Just go all the way at the top and all the way at the bottom. Yep. From there I'm going into full arm circle. I'm getting quite vigorous with these, really loosening off all the joints, and then back. Same again. Back. Okay, wrap arounds. Open up, close up. Try not to hit yourself too hard. Okay, two hands together. I'm going forward a little bit, small back bend. Forward, small back bend. Forward. And forward, back, forward, back, and then I get a little bit more bigger in my movements. Yeah, one more time each side, and last time, single arm forward, single arm back. So, see my other side, single arm forward. And back. Okay, rotations. Get the waist involved, pivot up. Yeah, work your way down, get a little bit warmer. Work your way up and down. Now we're going to reach down and reach up. Nice and high. Should be getting warmer now. All the way down. And all the way up. Okay, big circles round and then the opposite way. I'm coming to the end of my chair, so the highest point of my chair, and I'm going to do a little warm up half press to get the chest muscles, pulling in my core muscles at the same time, and then from there, pulling back. Still activating chest muscles, but getting these back muscles working. And then from the top, I'm pulling down. I'm in a split stance now. Pulling down. Two more. I'm coming up into a bicep curl. So mimicking a lot of the movements we're going to do weighted. A couple more. Take it to the side. Lateral raise. Excellent. Couple more. 
hip hinging. All that means is I'm bending over from my hips, into one arm forward and then the other. Again, activating upper back muscles and the shoulders, and then go into a little bit of a swim. Let's really get going. Four more, three more, two more. The last time, really felt it through the core there as well. Okay, let's take another the Qigong, soft knees, spinning plates. Oh, that gets right into the shoulders. That's it. So try not to skip through the warm up. Really important. So we can get full range of motion. You'll get much more out of these exercises if you follow this warm up. Okay, one more time each side. And last one. A little bit of a heart raiser to finish off. So we're washing the windows. And we're coming up to a little jog. Last 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That's your warm up complete. I'm going to grab some water. Okay, so let's get going with this upper body routine. So we're going to work in repetitions. So I'm going to do 10 reps of each as a rep range. And I've got an A, B, C, and D. So as I say, each one is going to have um, an element of pushing, pulling um, in various different formats. The first one I'm going to do is a single arm row. I'm going to use the chair. Now I have been single arm row in previous ones and we've been in a split stance, yeah? I'm going to change that. I'm going to move the seat a little bit further forward so you can see. I'm going to take the kettlebell, a heavier weight. The back muscles can take a heavier weight in comparison to say a bicep. If we think about the sizing of the muscles, so a relatively small area of muscle there for the bicep, you would need a lighter weight. Big back muscles, the lats, trapezius, rhomboids, all these big muscles will work together. So the bigger the area, generally, the bigger the weight. So I'm going to do this in a hip hinge fashion. So if I show you a hip hinge, that's the movement there. I'm going to need a slight bend in my knee. I'm going to raise on two. Yep. So this is the position I'm going to be in. My left hand is there. I'm going to pick it up with the right hand, keeping my back head to tail. Tail and ear to head. Keeping it nice and flat. You will feel some work through the back of the legs and we'll get into a single arm row. So if you get yourself in this position here to start with, and then we'll go for that row. So we're gonna do 10 each side, yep. Gonna aim for the hip, or the back pocket, as I like to call it. Two, three, slow and controlled. Four, five, we're at halfway. Keep that body nice and still for me. Six, seven, Eight, nine, last one, ten. Excellent. We swap over. You may want to come up in between um, because the position you're in is maybe a little bit overbearing for you today. If you're not used to it, a hip hinge. My right hand goes down, my left hand comes in. Yeah, I've got that slight bend in the knee. Back is flat. Up we come. Ten on this side, slow and controlled. Thinking about time under tension, the longer the muscles are under tension, the more they are working. Try not to speed it up. Halfway, aiming for that hip pocket. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. So there you have a single arm row for the back muscles, yeah? So now we're going to go into pushing. I'm going to show you a press up now. Most of you um, probably struggle with progressing from full press ups to half press ups. It's a super hard exercise. It's a full body exercise. You need your full body to be in control to execute uh, press ups on the floor. So what I've done um, throughout the years is, is try to go from floor on the knee press ups to full press ups. I've tried and tried and tried countless times over the years. I'm not going to tell you how many years I've tried to do that. But what 
what's worked for me and I think a really good formula is to do a standing press up and then eventually get yourself to the floor. So that could be a wall press up here. Yeah? So you've got your hands against the wall. You're up onto the toes, come into the wall and back. And then you're gonna try and get lower and lower and lower and lower. And eventually you earn yourself a place on the floor. So as I say, it's I would consider it a full body exercise because the whole body needs to be involved. You can't just think it's for the upper body because you need everything to be there in its place to help you do this press up. So I engage my core muscles, yeah? I imagine somebody's gonna punch me in the stomach, I brace them. I actively engage my glutes, even my core muscles. I'm making everything, my whole body as strong as possible to be able to execute these presses. Now I'm gonna do it from the chair, yeah? So some of you, this would be too low, yeah? So you maybe need something a little bit higher and solid. You do not want it to move. My chair is not going to move because I've got it on the mat, yeah? So another thing about the press is that a lot of the time it's there, which is really hunch you through the shoulders. I'm going to try and get you to take the elbows to go, teach you to the, go back as opposed to flaring out, yeah? So as I say, I brace my core muscles, switch everything on, my hands go on my chair. I'm up on my toes, taking my chest down and back up, down and back up. So if you play around and find somewhere in a standing position, it's either on the wall for the first week, maybe, and then eventually you're going to come down and eventually you'll be able to do them on the floor, yeah. But you need to execute them perfectly in each of this positions until you can eventually do them on the floor yeah okay so let's get a position find your your position probably against the wall or maybe a chair but probably not as low as mine okay three two one go Good down push away so i'm pushing my hands through the chair as i come up and you'll notice my elbows track back as opposed to flaring out to the side Really concentrating and keeping my body nice and still. Halfway. Six. Seven. Take your time if you can. Eight. Nine. Ten. Well done. So we're in grouping, yeah? So this is A and we did the single arm row. We've done the press ups. Now we're going to do a small muscle group. Bicep curl. In my opinion, most people spend far too long on these little muscles and they should be working the bigger muscles like we've just done there. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on an accessory muscle. But I've done two big muscles first, two big muscle groups and then the little muscle group. Because a lot of the time in these big moves like the single arm row, the press ups, because they're using lots of muscles at the same time, you'll incidentally work the biceps and triceps. Personally, I don't spend a lot of time on these little muscles like I used to because they work, get worked incidentally when I'm doing the big muscles, yep. So just to finish off, what I'm going to do is my kettlebell. And I'm going to hold it here, yep. Now I've never managed to do this single arm, yep. It just wouldn't work. The muscle group would be far too overloaded because it's too small. But maybe with two together, I will manage. Keep it nice and tight. Yeah. So the arms are flush to my sides. I'm pulling up and down. Okay. Find a weight or you could have two small dumbbells in each hand. Okay. Let's go. Ten repetitions. Bicep curls all the way up, all the way down. That's it. Don't spend as much time on these accessories, muscles as we call them, because they're small muscles and they will get overloaded and worked in the big muscle groups, yep. Yeah. I've lost count, but I reckon that's halfway. Okay, this is number six. Still bracing my core muscles, number seven. A slight bend in my knees so my back isn't overloaded. Eight, nine, 
One more. Ten. Fantastic. There's your bicep curl. Yep. So we'll go back to the beginning. So we've got our single arm row. Yep. So we get that hip hinge going again. Slight bend in knee. Flat back. Even from a hip pocket. Three, two, one. Go. Slow and control. One. Two, three, keep that head steady, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Swap it over. Push the opposite hand into the chair, or if you need to, come up to give it a rest, even some hip circles. Yep, to release the hips. Here we go, other side. Three, two, one. Go up to that hip pocket. Try and keep the body perfectly still. Really isolate those back muscles. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two left, nine, Ten. Well done. Let's put this out the way so we're not tripping over it. Press ups, yeah, so on the walls, perfectly fine, yeah. You can always find a lower surface eventually. Three, two, one, go. Releasing all big muscles in my glutes, my legs, through the core. Push through that hand. Halfway. Two more. Excellent. A little stretch there. So what you're looking for in that position, that, that is really unacceptable. Yeah, the hips see up high. If you have any kind of curve in your back, then you're asking for trouble. But I said cut off. I'm going to use a kettlebell. You can use a weight in each hand. Three, two, one, go. Two, three, four, keep it tight. Five, all the way down, all the way up. Six, full range of motion. Seven, eight, two more, nine, Ten. I'm going to move on to B. You could do another round of A. You can stop me there and put in your third round now that you know what you're doing. B, seated seal row. This may look a little bit uh, strange. I'm going to use some smaller weights. Yep. So I'm sitting over the chair. Yep. Straddling the chair. Yep. I rest my chest on the top of the chair. And I roll here. Yep. Bend over, row. Bend over, row. Okay, now the second one to that is an overhead press. I'm going to do a seated overhead press. I'm going to manage a heavier weight for this. I'm sitting on my chair, pushing up and down. Yeah, the reason I'm sitting down is not to have a rest, it's to make sure my legs don't do any of the work. I want my core muscles, all the muscles wrapped around here and these muscles to be taking all of the weight yet yeah, the third one from there is a tricep kickback yet yeah. i'm going to stand up for that one use a smaller weight smaller muscle group remember back of the arms squeeze and release please don't do this Face in each time you want to have tension on that muscle yep yeah. so that's your three exercises we'll do two rounds but once you've done two rounds and you've Got the exercises, um, you might want to repeat it for a third time. Okay, so our first one, our seal row. So again, three exercises, but we spend two exercises on the big muscle groups and just one exercise on the accessory muscle group. Yep. So I'm straddling my chair, my chest chair, overhand, squeeze in. That's one. Two, feel that shoulder blades pinch together. There, 
Head down if you can. Halfway. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Nine. Ten. Well done. Okay, we're in our overhead press now. So I'm changing up into my kettlebell. Yep. Press overhead, sitting up nice and tall, sitting up on that sitting bones. Try not to slouch. Oh, I really feel this through the core too, yeah. I do like to multitask. Halfway. Six. Seven. Eight. You've got two more. All the way up. And last one. So really important with that one sitting up nicely and not rounding off the back. Yeah, really use those core muscles. Our tricep kick that, so I'm going to stand up for that one in a split stance, one foot in front of the other, and I'm going to kick it back. Three, two, one, go. Squeeze. Two, three, four. Target in the back of the arms. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. I swap it around, making sure you're not treading on anything on your way. Be careful. Off we go. One, two, three, four, five. Squeeze. Six, seven, eight. Two more. Nine, ten. Excellent. So we'll do one more round of that. So I'm on my seated rows. Yeah. We call them seal rows in the gym. Yeah. So I'm just trying to replicate that. So lean forward, lean over. Three, two, one. Squeeze and release. Working into those upper back muscles. Three, four, five. From there, I'm going into my overhead press. I'm going to change up to my bigger weight. Sitting up nice and tall for me. Three, two, one. Press overhead. Push. Halfway. Last two. Come on, keep going. Last one. Excellent. You may start to feel the burn soon. We're going to triceps, back of the arms. Okay, three, two, one, go. Squeeze. Three. Side. Go. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So feel free to stop me there and for you to continue on and do another round of that. I'm moving down onto the floor. So again, two big muscle groups, one small accessory muscle group. For this, I'm going to use a band and it's wrapped around my feet. Yep, and I'm doing a horizontal roll for the back muscles. I pull and I release. Yep, pull and I release, okay? So from there, we're going to go on to a kneeling overhead press. So why am I getting you to kneel? Just being cruel. <laughs> no, because you're going to use your core muscles and we're taking the legs out of the equation, yeah? So for this, sing 
single arm presses, I'm using a smaller weight because I feel that the kettlebell may be too heavy for this. I'm rotating round. Palm faces me, palm faces away. Yeah, and then we'll do the other side. And then after that, we're going to do a lat raise. So you could use a band or with me, some lighter dumbbells. Yeah, and this will get into shoulders. Yeah, our smaller muscle groups. So our first one and our second one, the bigger muscle groups, third one smaller. Okay, so let's get yourself set up for that one. You have your band round. See, so we'll do two rounds. Feel free to add in a third or Around the feet. Yep. So you've got nice and tall, slight bend in three, two, one. Pull in and release. Take your time. Last two. Excellent, okay. So from there, stay on the floor, but just come up onto one knee. We're gonna do five on one side and then swap over. Here we go. One, two, three, two more, four. And then you're gonna try and swap it over. Swap over hands, swap over legs, same again. One, two, three, two more, four, five. Excellent. I swap that over for my standing lateral raise. Three, two, one. Go out to the side and back in. Watch the length through the neck. Don't bunch them up. That's it. That's too much. Shorten the length of the arms, just like a chicken wing. That's it. I'll lengthen it out for more work. Six, seven, eight. If this is too much for you, what will happen is you'll end up like this and really hurting your back. So keep it nice, a bit little bend in that knee, and that will prevent that. Okay, one more round of that, folks, yeah? So we go onto the floor for our seated horizontal row. Yeah, our pulling exercise. And then we'll get our pushing one done. Okay, three, two, one, go. Squeeze and release. Two, three, big pull. Excellent. That's our pulling movement. We're now into our pushing movement. Got a plate, we're up on one knee. Okay, three, two, one, go. Push up five, four, three, two, one. Other side, same again, five, four, three, two, one, excellent. Into the shoulders now, smaller weight, smaller muscle group, soft knees, three, two, one, go. Remember, if this is too much, shorten the lever, levers mean the arms to here, yeah. Or something in between. Halfway. Nice long neck. Six. Seven. Eight. Just two more. Nine. Ten. Excellent. So that's our two rounds done. You could add in a third or fourth now that you know what you're doing. We'll go on to our last grouping, D. Yeah. So what I'm going to do for that is on the floor, I'm going to use my band. You don't have to use the band, but what I'm going to do is a little pull down on the floor. Yeah, I look down to the floor, my chest is up, 
I mean, if you wanted to, you could lift the legs off the floor to get some brilliant work through the core and back. But I'm pulling down. Yeah, if you want to do that without the band, without bringing your legs out, it'll be easier. Try and look towards the floor to keep the neck and head in alignment. Yeah. From there, I'm going to show you some chair dips. Not for everybody. Yeah, don't struggle along with these. Just do your kickbacks again. Yep, so it's the kickbacks, but I really um, want to get into the chest muscles a bit more, and that would be a dip. Yep, so go down, push up, yep. Down, push up, yep. So that gets into the chest muscles, a little bit of tricep too, yep. But be careful with these ones. If you feel as steady at all, you sit in kickbacks, yeah. I won't harm you to do kickbacks again. Okay, the third one from there, um, I'm going to do some bicep curls, but I'm going to do them with a band. I'm going to stand in the band, make a fist like an ice cream cone, yep, yeah. and I'm going to do five each side, yep. Yeah. So with this bicep, uh, exercise is always looking for like the top of the arm to be flush, yeah, as opposed to out there, which is really going to aggravate my joints. Yeah, okay, let's get going with the last one. So, quite intense this last one, but it is the last one. Yeah, so I've got the band and I also try and do a little bit of a tidy up. You'll find that at home as well, but you need to make it as safe as possible because it's maybe something that you've not done before working out at home and the last thing you want to do is be tripping over things. Okay, let's get going. Okay, three, two, one. Pull wide. Sit. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. Nine, ten. Super hard that one I find. Super effective though. Okay, on to our dips or you're on seated triceps. Okay. So I'm pushing, position my hands just either side. Try not to have my legs too far away. Okay, we've got three, two, one, go. Keeping the length through my neck. Push away. Push away. I'm pushing my hands through that chair. Five, six, seven, eight. Full range. Nine, ten. Okay. Well done if you did that one. You should have felt it through the chest, the shoulders, and the back of the arms. Bicep curls. I'm going to do the standing with my fan. You could do this with a small weight. Making my ice cream cone and my fist, five in each side. One, two, three, four. Maybe have a tight grip in it and with the feet so it doesn't ping. One more. So those five are worth much more than a hundred with a very light weight that you swing about. Guarantee it. Yep. Three, two, one, go. Five. Four, keep that band nice and tight. Three, two, one. Well done. One more round with me. And then you're on your own if you want to add in more on the floor. Okay, this time I'm going to do a little bit of a dorsal raise, so I'm raising the legs off to make it more intense. Three, two, one, go. Nice and wide. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa, super effective, like I said before. Really like that exercise. I'm going on my dips. For some of you, that might just be a seated tricep kickback. Um, 
workouts to come. So further down the line, I will show you how to do um, a super advanced version of this with two chairs, if you've got two dining chairs. It's a great uh, opportunity to do some advanced dipping. All right. Let's get set up. Forearm comes off. Neck nice and long. Three, two, one. And go all the way down the bottom. And then I push through that chair. Hope you've got a tight grip in your chair. Three, four. I'm still bracing those abs. Five, squeezing my glutes at the top. Six, seven, eight. Two more. Nine, last one. Ten. Ooh, felt that. Well done. Last time, bicep curls. Five each side. Shorter this band is and the tighter it is, the more effective these will be. Three, two, one, go. But at the same time, you want to have full range of motion. If you can only get the band up halfway, that's no use. It's too heavy then, yeah? The, the resistance is too heavy. Full range of motion. I think that's right. Same on the other side, yeah? So that's our fine line between overloading the muscles and just basically having the weight too heavy that you can't execute with good form the exercise. We've got to hit the sweet spot, yeah? Four. Last one. Five. Excellent. So that's our upper body workout done. Yep, so we had A, which was a single arm row, the press ups and the bicep curls. We had B, um, the seal row, yep, over the chair with the overhead pressing and the tricep kick cuts. We had C, which was the band wrapped around, we pulled in. We did the kneeling presses, we did the lateral raises, and then we just finished off at the moment with the prone, that means facing the floor, and we did the pull downs. We did the chair dips or we did the press, uh, the tricep press again and then we finished up with the single arm bicep curls. So speaking about um, resistance exercise, you don't want it so light that there's no resistance there, yeah? Then it just becomes a cardio workout and you'll be do doing almost zero toning unless you're a complete beginner, yeah? But at the same time, if you're not executing the exercises so you come to do a lateral raise and you only get to there because it's so heavy, you'll probably end up hurting something, yeah? So it's trying to get that sweet spot, yeah? So this could be an opportunity at home to find that sweet spot for you. As I say, there's no point in doing a hundred of years if your arms are flying all over the place. You might think you are because you're getting out of breath, you're sweating, you're thinking, oh, I must be doing really good here because I'm feeling so out of breath. That is not an indication that you are toning the muscles, yeah? Time under tension, slowly and gently. So many times in classes I've seen a bicep cut off and they're only getting to here. You are not working the muscle effectively. You're probably just hurting your hands, your forearms, and probably hurting your back. But if you can get it all the way up with tension and all the way through, and you feel tension in the belly of the muscle, then you've hit the sweet spot, yeah? But if you're going like this, and about 20 minutes later, you're still not feeling anything, you're just getting all sweaty and hot, then you're probably not doing much for what you want to do, which is basically tone, yeah? Tone and strengthen. Okay, hope you enjoyed that. Hope it wasn't too much of a lecture. Let's see the guns. Show the guns, yeah? Sun's out, guns out. Uh, I'm going to go and do some sunbathing now with my upper body all nicely toned. Okay, thanks for watching, guys. Look out for a lower body version of that concentrate, and then maybe you can put the two together. Okay, until then, bye bye.